look at that plate of food. Oh man. Oh, that one is a dry chili. Oh. The shrimp, the okra in there smells wonderful. Whiting is the fish. Deep fry smells incredible. We've got rice, the fried whiting. Welcome to St. Helena Island, and we have met up now with Tony and Belinda from Morning Glory Homestead for me, and then also for, I think, a lot of people watching this might not know exactly who are the Gullah people. Gullah refers to not only the people, but the language that the people spoke. Ah. So the Gullah people are a combination of people who were taken from their homes in Africa, who primarily lived along the West Coast, which is called like the Rice Coast, and they were brought here and they developed their own language and way to speak and communicate amongst themselves. And that language became known as Gullah. Welcome to the Morning Glory Homestead. And this is the sustainable, regenerative, natural farm. We're gonna walk around first. We're gonna tour, see what they have. You can already hear turkeys and ducks and they have some goats in the back too. And then they have a variety of vegetables that they grow here. They also preserve some of the ingredients which are used in Gullah cuisine. Such a cool place. We're surrounded by forest. We're near the ocean. We're on an island. It is beautiful. We're just walking around first seeing some of the Ducks, chickens, turkeys, geese. So cool how it's such a natural and they're just free to roam about. And were you always into farming or is this something that you've gotten into? When I was in the military, we had a little garden plot. We started here oh, okay. and we started giving away vegetables. And as the kids aged out of 4-H, we started thinking, well, let's stop giving away the vegetables. Let's start allowing it to be a part of uh, our livelihood. And so there go Morning Glory Homestead Farm. And the farm is named after uh, there's a wild flower that grows here um, called Morning Glory. Okay. And okay. Uh, you will see it's named after the Morning Glory Farm. Those majestic live oaks are a sight that will never get old. Such a story to tell. We're moving back here. We're, I think we're now proceeding on to the vegetables. Broccoli on the first row and a half. Cabbage for about two and a half rows. And then we've got collards, six uh, tomato plants, and some cucumbers. What do we have here? This is okra. The variety is called Clemson spineless. Uh, it doesn't have any spines on it. Every part of the okra plant is edible and very useful. We found out uh, just the other week that there are some people that uh, take the leaves and put it in water and rub it together and they make soap out of it. Ah. The seeds are edible. The leaves are also edible on an okra uh, uh, plant. Oh, cool. I've never eaten the leaves, yeah. And guess what? An okra can be eaten raw. In the African language, the okra is gumbo. Really, when you do say gumbo, it, it's like a soup or a stew that's yeah. made, made with made, okra made originally. Right. Okra right. would be like the thickening yeah, agent. Yeah. So we're going to harvest some okra, and that's going to be part of the meal this afternoon? Yes, it will. We're going to have Great. shrimp and okra. Oh, nice. Thank you very much. All right, and then, yeah, raw. I mean, you don't often think that okra can be eaten raw, but it's perfectly okay to eat raw okra. And this is as natural as you can possibly get. I mean, right off the okra plants. All right, so here we go. Mm. Oh man. Oh, it's deliciously crisp. You can taste the, I mean, the naturalness. At my first bite, I could almost taste a little bit of a saltiness. Oh. Oh, that's the, the greatest ever raw okra you'll ever have. Nice. And then finally we have some of the fresh collard greens. Collard greens are one of the great vegetables, especially common in Southern United States. Okay. Thank you. 
Oh, these are limes, huge limes. That huge lime. Oh yeah. Oh man, that's as fresh as could be. In South Carolina, it's a subtropical climate. So you can grow some of the tropical fruits and vegetables here as well. So they have some figs, there's some bananas. Oh, what is this one? Persimmons. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Here we go, we're gonna sample the, the persimmons. Oh yeah. Oh, they're so sweet. I always think Persimmon is just like a natural jam, straight up sweet, a little bit starchy, great flavor, really nice. On that persimmon snack, we're walking over to the live oak trees where I think Belinda has been setting up and we're gonna start cooking a Gullah farm to table meal from the farm. These are all Ritz crackers. And these are all refrigerator pickles. Um, mm. We dug up some carrots yesterday. So these are the onions are. I think that we bought the onions, but the pe the peppers are from here, and so are the carrots. All right. So the tops of the carrots are here. It's like a pesto, like a chimichurri. Okay. Okay, sauce. Oh, cool. Okay, so that would probably be with that. All right. These okras. are pickled okras. Oh, beautiful. Right? And this one has more of the like, you see the little chilies in yeah. there? The whole chilies, oh, yeah, and this like one that. doesn't have the whole chilies okay. in it. I can't get it out. Okay, there we go. There's one. Okay. Can't wait to try a pickled okra. Stop it. Stop that sound. Mmm. Oh, it's wonderful. Mm hmm. So, I mean, just like the raukra, it's crisp. Oh, it's so refreshing, but with that added vinegariness, the blend of spices, you taste the coriander seed in there, the allspice in there. It just has that hint of clove and nutmeg. Okra too, make Thank it, you. it's soft. I'll put that chili onto that. <laughs> there we go. And there's some in here too, like a pesto or similar to a chimichurri. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. That's wonderful, wonderfully refreshing. Oh man, that chili is a welcome addition. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Oh yeah, that has a bit of heat to it. A black eyed pea okra salad. Oh wow. With, of course, some peppers. Yeah. Wow. And this one has the and dark. And some okra. Yeah, see the dark pepper there? Okay. Oh yeah. I'm just loving the use of how they use raw okra. I mean, okra in every stage and form, but raw okra, so refreshing, so incredibly crisp, like a cucumber, but more airy and a little more sticky. Now, this is a beautiful dish of black eyed peas uh, with some chilies in it with fresh chopped up okra. And I think there's some green peppers in there too. Mm. Oh, you immediately taste the green peppers in there. That vibrant aroma to it. The crunch of the raw okra, wonderfully simple, natural tasting, and just, you taste the vibrancy of the real ingredients in their natural state. And then I'm gonna add, oh man, you cannot get enough of these chilies. What? Oh, that's a pimento. That's a pimento or an allspice berry. Oh, that one is a dry chili. Oh. Mm-hmm. So good. Mm, that's local shrimp. That's local shrimp. I'm gonna take the heads off and I'm gonna leave some for you. All right. And then when you get through doing that, they have an apparatus that you can remove it, but I grew up doing it with a fork. With a fork. Oh, just slice that back. It's clearly the oh, shell back. Very well. And then you can devein. You do vein in the, the shrimp. So some local shrimp from the coast right here. They got it from a local fisher and just pull off that shell, pull off the head, devein them. Those are gonna be cooked with the okra. Pinch the heads off. Oh, you're doing it too gentle, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then slide the fork down the, the back. A little bit at a time. Okay. 
No. The other way. <laughs> oh, the other side. So you weren't paying attention. <laughs> oh, in, okay. In out. and oh yeah. Go in. in and out. In and out. Oh, every segment kind of. Okay, then you can peel. Shrimp. Then the shrimp pops out, revealing the, the flesh. And then also at the same time, you can then go down the, the back side and take out that. There we go. There's the, the vein. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Mr. Tony, what are you getting started cooking now? Uh, the onions. And this is, is this gonna be for the okra and shrimp? Yeah. All right, so you had some bacon going on here first. Mm -hmm. and that kind of sizzled down, now we've got the bacon fat. Yeah. Oh man, that smells so good. The okra, it's just been cut up. Oh, oh man, that smells incredible. That bacon grease, okra, onions. Pepper goes in. You said spicy? Sure. Oh yeah. What is that? This is roux. Roux, okay. Yeah, what, what and what is what is roux here? It's you uh, you boil the shrimp head. Okay. And you take the uh, the broth off the shrimp head. Ah. And the shrimps are going in. And that just smells wonderful. The roux, the broth of the shrimp, the shrimp, the okra in there, seasoned with salt and pepper. Oh, garlic. Some garlic goes in. Oh, yeah. Okay. So then we have some fish over here. What kind of fish are these? They're called whiting. Oh, these are whiting. Okay. So whiting is the fish very popular and yeah, local favorite in these parts. And so they just quick batter goes on. That's gonna go into the deep fryer. Deep fry smells incredible. Going into a batter and gonna be fried. Yes. <laughs> that extra bit of flavor. Setting here in the evening could not be more perfect. The majestic, they truly are majestic live oaks. The fish is frying, the okra and shrimp are almost ready. I think the rice, they are ready, it is ready. It's just waiting for us to eat. Living off the land, growing vegetables, the seafood of the Atlantic, and I think the resourcefulness and the knowledge of growing your food. I think that's one of the big factors that I've learned today that is a major part of the Gullah culture. Wow, cornbread. Oh yes, another must have. Oh, must have. This is grits. Oh, okay. This is Jimmy Red Grits. It's just a slow cooking. It's from Edisto Island, a, a store there that wow. has a mill. Marshall. You see the yeah, texture Marshall. of that, yeah. the coarseness of it. So these dishes could be eaten with either rice or grits. So you can try both. Ah, either way you like. okay. What a meal spread. Cornbread in the skillet. There's the black eyed pea salad. There's biscuits, the fried whiting. We've got the okra and shrimp. We've got rice. Oh, what a meal. Time together. We thank you now, Father, for the food and the hands that prepared it. We isolate it. 
nourish our bodies. For us in your son, Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, here we go. I've been excited for this all day long. Got to start with some of the rice, which you just look at that aroma. You smell the aromatics in that rice. Lots of different herbs in here. Amazing texture, the coarseness of it. Wow, and I love that texture too. It's not, not runny, but holds its form. One of the main events, the shrimp and okra from the, the farm here. And you eat it both together with grits and with the uh, rice, right? You can. I take this whole whiting. Oh man, you can feel how soft it is. Set this guy down right here. Oh. Black eyed pea salad on the side there too. Black eyed pea salad. Look at that plate of food. Oh man. And I cannot wait. Enjoy. Sorry, I couldn't wait. No, <laughs> okay. Please don't, please dig in. I'm going <laughs> to dig into that whiting. Mm. Oh, wow, yes. The freshness. Oh, I love that. It's just like a flash fry, so it's so, so juicy on the inside. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, man, the whiting is just absolutely delicious. Fresh, neutral, crispy, oily on the inside. So good. Okay, I gotta try the shrimp, the okra with that rice. Mm. Oh man, yes. That just, the naturalness of it. Oh, you taste that flavor, the aroma of the shrimp and the heads in there, the freshness of the shrimp. But it's all about that okra, that really powers it, that provides the sauciness of it, the stickiness that is used in such a positive and wonderful way to bring it all together. Man, it's so good. And I love that that fish. You can mix some of the, the fish into it, the shrimp and rice. You got the bacon in there. Those chilies. Mm, I wanna try that, that hot sauce. Oh yeah, thank you. Cannot wait to try this hot sauce. Then with that hot sauce mixed in. Mm. Oh yeah, with that hot sauce, the vinegary acidic fermentation of it. Delicious. And then the way that fish is just so, it's just like so soft. Just flakes off the bone. Crispy pieces of fish. <laughs> Mm. Mm hmm. They love honey. I like honey because it's sweet. Mm. Oh, the honey is wonderful, fragrant and aromatic. Not too sweet, but so much flavor. Goes great with the cornbread that's crumbly, that's a little bit salty. That contrast of the salty cornbread with the sweet honey and the aromatics. Oh, that's delicious. I could not stop at one plate of food. Just too good. Too good to stop. Too, too delicious. Mm. More of that fish. More okra and rice. Man, it's such a, it's also, after traveling around and eating at almost all just restaurants, it's such a treat to have a home-cooked meal like this. That's because you just taste the, the difference and the, well, not to mention the freshness of all the ingredients that are used in this meal.